instruments when you're out on the road, you, you need those. If you have a blowout on your truck, uh, you uh, you need them. A lot of times, you can feel as you're going down the road, you can feel your trailer giving it this right here. There's several reasons. One is your air pressure and your tires on your trailer. You make sure they're they're up to where they need to be. Another thing is the air pressure on your tires on your truck. If you don't have the right air pressure, then it'll it they, it'll have a tendency to do this and walk and sway on you. It also could be your load, your load on your in your trailer. If you have too much in the front, it's better than too much in the back. Too much in the front puts a lot of weight on the back of your truck and it squats the tires and so it, it, it'll walk around on you. If you have too much in the back, it lifts the truck up and it'll walk around on you even more than it would if you had too much weight in the front versus the back. So you want to kind of even your load out where you have a good and even. If you have a blowout, hopefully you never do, you can always take these two boards right here back up on it and you'd lift this tire up off the ground that way I could change that tire out instead of having to get out there with the jack and it, it takes a long time and with the jack sometimes it falls and, and with this it doesn't you just back it up on there normally if you can back that tire right to here on top of that board right there you could even if it's just a little bit in front of it but if you back it up with this with this board to go flat like that you've got plenty of room Pretty sturdy, it's not gonna shake around, shake off that thing. I got my horse and the reason I did was because I wanted to make sure that the those gates are, are open in there instead of having to get my horse come around there open that up and then try to tie my horse off and then make sure the gates are closed I'll make sure they're go ahead and open my gate up and I don't do that all the time it's just a good rule of thumb to do that then that way you're not having to do that to fight with a horse especially if you have a horse that's not trained real well I'm going to try to take my horse real tight. I'll get him out away from the trailer first. Yeah, thanks for leaving him. <laughs> and I won't be in any hurry with him. The best way is, is to throw this over and wrap it around here a couple times. Let him go in or to slide it through here and pull him up through there. I, I don't do that. Uh, I walk in there with my, with my horses. And so when I go in, I'll bring my horse up to the trailer and I'll dip in there. It's parked in such a way that the trailer's a little higher right now. And, and, I, and I don't pull on him real hard. I just... I just let him kind of come up in there. And if, if he wanted to sniff around, I'd let him sniff around some. And then I'd give him a little tug and see if he'd come. If he didn't, I'd give him a little bit more tug. And if they don't want to come, then what you do is you work on them. All my horses back. 
back out of the trailer. So when we go in there, we don't have to spin them around, we just back them up. Man, he's making it too easy for me. <laughs> oh, she'll load. But you've got to, she has to decide that she wants to go. Just make sure you stand to the side of your horse when you go in there, not, not in front of them. You got, you got, if you got two people, you got, see I just pulled on him, he didn't come up. Like if you got two people, you can have somebody just go right behind him. Like the green grass. <laughs> he said, Man, you done put me in there twice and we didn't go nowhere. We're doing Same way it. when you unload them, you must stay to the side of them, you open the gate up, or if you just have a single tray or whatever, you want to be, you don't want them to, you don't want them to bind you in here. If you got a small trader, you need to stay out of it until you're really comfortable with them. time where they're loose where they can go all the way to the back where their butts can hit the back of this trailer they can go all the way forward but you don't want them to be able to get their head around you want to be if they pull their head around you know so far you don't want them to get their head around because if they do if they start doing that and you're going down the road you have to slam on your brakes or something and it it'll hurt their neck they could be out in their neck you might not be able to ride them you could hurt their neck badly Hey, it sure draws it out. What do you do if you got old horses that are not Sixteen year old that's scared to death of him. Unless if he sees another horse head in, he'll follow. But then I've got another seven year old that flat down here. It took tranquilizers to get him back to the face of It was, it was a black horse trailer. You can paint the inside of a wine. That'll help. That's one thing. I'll tell you another thing. I'm looking for stock trainers now. You know, just something they can see. Yeah. Because yeah. I parked it in the corral for three months. And then he stood, put feet in there. It didn't matter. The ropes behind them with four guys pulling the rump. Uh, that's, that's no way to look for the horse. I, I've loaded them like that a bunch of times. But it, it's a bad experience for a horse. Well, that's what it was. I was getting them from Kansas back to here. The rescue horses. I guess they were the same trailers I sold them. Look, Mark, what I try to do is if, if they're again working, they learn so much and they'll pay them so much attention when their feet get to pounding and, and that heart goes to beat. If they come up there and they don't want to load, I'll lunge them right out here. In, yeah. a, in a circle, yeah. I'll back them up, back them up, back them yeah, up. you can back them up, or you can work them in a circle. Just right out, right out here. But they're not all gonna. Come on. They're not all gonna. They're not all gonna work in a circle. Come on, boy. Yeah, but if you get them where they can learn.
pulled him that way. So just that little bit right there is training. And you can be this far back and make him go between you and the trader. Just pull him this way and make him go between you and the trader. And what they learn is, is that pressure, that pressure is where, where they need to go. If I pull that horse this way, I want him to go that way. And so that's, that's starting right there. And he didn't give a lot of resistance to that, to my hand. So, he started to, but, and, and just a little bit at a time, and if you can get them just to pay attention to that pressure, that's, that's the start. I pulled them in there with ropes, I put ropes behind them, pulled them in there, and every time I've always had to work with them again. But load them, working them out here, and getting them to go in, because they want to go in, they know that at that trailer, they get their head in that trailer, they stop working. But if you can't get them in, after get them a little bit, just bring them back here, work them again, take them back to that trailer. They'll learn that that trailer is relief from working. That's the way they learn. Even the older horses will learn that. It just it, it makes it a lot more work. Yeah. Play it on the day. Yeah, that's good. That is good to just another thing they they the what, what they remember is a long ride in that trailer. Oh, yeah, it's all horrible. What, what you do is you take a short trip. Then 15 miles, back home, and then the next day, it's on the same thing. The way they get used to where the trailer is on the animal there, there was a guy, see, what is that? Short chubby guy. Him and his wife train. Pirelli. And one of Pirelli's uh, deals, I'm, I'm not big on Pirelli. He goes great with it. He's a great horseman. Don't get me wrong. But what I've seen Pirelli do, and one of his things is he was working the horse and he was stopping and he said, All right, I want everybody to stand up. They stood up and he went to work in the horse. Worked the horse, did this, did that, just went on like nothing was going on. And he looked back up and the only people who were standing were the older people. I mean, the, the younger people. Now, let's see. Am I getting that wrong? I can't remember. Anyway, what he was doing is he was showing the fact that the, the, the older people, uh, I can't remember how he what done the it. the attention span? Yeah, the attention span and, and their what they were here how long they're willing to stand up. Right. They would gotten used to sitting down so much that the it was the younger people still standing. They went ahead and sit down because that's what they were used to doing. And so they go back faster. It's harder to get an older horse to do something, but it can be done. But it's, if, if you do it with the gentleness like that, where you just work them, and you ain't got to beat them because, man, I used to, damn, I... Hey, come on, get going. And sometimes I still get frustrated and do that, but the good guys because we think that's no good. Well when we got the we had to load the only thing she was loaded was the the BLM. She was sick, didn't she was sick? And she was so weak, there was no way that I was going to do it that way. So the only way I could load her was go in and take the lungs out and bring it through one at a time on the inside and actually get behind her because she still didn't trust a human being. And the real world had to drive around. And I was going to do it. I was going to do it. I was going to do it. You gotta, you gotta realize, a horse is used to carry how many pounds on the body? What are they capable of doing? Some of these pack animals, they'll put six, seven hundred pounds weight on them. If you got a horse that falls, most, yeah. most horses are gonna fall at something. They get bored, they start pawing. I can tie here, but I don't, because uh, Gus, he'll paw at stuff, and a lot of times the valve stems down. 
here, and they're just rubber bouncing. And he'll bust one of them out in a heartbeat. So I, just, I have a habit of just tying my horse up a little higher too. Yeah, I believe in that too. I don't like low hay nets. They can I get through. Yeah. They can get their hoof up over it. I mean, they can do a lot of things that could cause a lot of damage. So you got to find out what works for you. And not just because I say something's going to work may not be the exact way that you end up doing it. Because it, it, sometimes it doesn't work out. But that working, working the horse, it, it always works. Now, it may take a long time, and you may have to work the horse a lot longer than what you think, but it works. And it might take several days before you will be able to Oh, yeah, it, it's everything they need. The tying up, they don't like to be tied up. Also, too, I would, the I, and when my horse was younger, I put chips down. So she was used to stalling at night with chips. So I chipped in there, and that was like walking into a smaller stall. So. Make, make sure the trailer's connected to the truck. Yeah. Before you time to the trailer. Yeah, don't ever. There the been... trailer will, you look out your window and there goes your trailer. Watch the front yard. Even even grabbing your horse that you can't pick their feet up on, if you start brushing them, you start brushing here and they start moving around, then you know they don't like you being down there. It's a little foreign to them. You get down here, they get a little agitated. Just brush them. I come here and then I'm I brush down a couple times and then get off that leg. Then I come here and I'll, I'll some horses you can get here and they start getting a little agitated and move around. So I find that spot and what I do is I'll try to go to it and pass it and then come back, start brushing them where I can brush them and then do it again. And then eventually, you know, you can work your way down a little bit. But if you're down here the whole time, Some horses don't like that. But just to get them used to coming down here once or twice and coming back to them. That's all part of training. This this right here, grooming of your horse, if you if you brush your horse, he's used to you touching him, eventually you'll be able to put your hand underneath him and stuff and rub on him and all that. Saddling a horse and leaving them tied up for a couple hours doesn't hurt that horse any. They think it does, but it doesn't. Having that saddle on, they sit there and think about that. So that's just part of training, training the horse, having a spot you can tie the horse to. You missed a spot. It's <laughs> <laughs> up on white, it? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> He was trying to tell you he raised his tail to point to it. Right. Up on top. I mean, right there. Right there. Thing you can notice, he's starting to fray up right here. Probably time to worm him. They start scratching against things right there. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Production. They'll start scratching against things when they get wormy. Uh, doesn't mean just because they got some frayed up, doesn't mean they're wormy, but it is one of the signs. And I try to rotate my warmer. One good thing is if you do your horse's feet every so often like they're supposed to be done, which I should have been doing his, I, I don't do his as often as I do other people's. But uh, if I did it every six weeks, I could warm him every six weeks. It ain't gonna hurt to warm once a month, I mean. And every so often the horse get, whereas if you're watching their poop, They'll either be real runny or, or really dry, and you can take, you can get some uh, stuff called Pro Bias, and uh, they have uh, bacteria in their stomach, and that Pro Bias is bacteria, and what it does is, is it's good bacteria, you got good bacteria and bad bacteria in the horse's stomach, and so you can use that Pro Bias every so often, and I wouldn't overuse it, but if your horse is having bowel problems and stuff, I would use it and it cleans the, uh, the other bacteria out and puts good bacteria in the stomach. Yeah, love is about to go. It's your pH right. You can use, uh, what was that, baking soda? A little bit of baking soda too, if you want to. Been around here, same clear. 
About once every six months. What's, oh what's that one? Sand clear. Sand clear, yeah. We use uh, Metamucil. Yeah. We buy the Metamucil on sale just put this little bit in their food every so often and it helps get that get right now, our hay is so dusty right now yeah it's it all going through there yeah. we don't have as big as problem with these two horses we've had other horses that were colicky some horses are just colicky so you have to watch them a lot yeah they tend to have be colicky on a regular basis and getting time to worm it I've had vets recommend putting them on a continuous form, a daily one, so that gut would heal at least a minimum of eight months. If you're looking at a horse and you start looking at the confirmation stuff, this horse at first glance has a pretty nice confirmation. He's got some flaws about him too. If you look down their legs, uh, if you stand with his feet are just a little bit, they should be straight down right here. Right here should be straight down. You don't want it out back and you don't want it way underneath them when they when they just regularly stand. Some of that can be uh, corrected by proper trimming and shoeing and stuff. But other than that, you can see this horse has some, has some bulges on it. Right here, how it sticks out real bad right here. And on the other side, he's got that same spot. So sometime during his bird, or when he was a foal, something happened to him, or he was just born that way because both sides were kind of out a little bit. And when he slimmed up, you can see yeah, it. Yeah, I can see it now. Right there. Other than that, that that's a, uh, other than that, he's, he's pretty decent. This is called, Clinton Anderson for Retro Seal here. Uh, Spray in your mouth like the salesman does. It does. He, he, the salesman, they're coming out with a human form. That same company is now doing that in human form. I man. Think they're going with a microphone. I thought, man, I, I just don't know if it's going to work. It's just too simple for me. I sprayed it on some little spots on him, some bikes and stuff when they first, when they first got him and some of the other horses. But when he, he cut his jaw over here on the other side pretty bad and it was really deep. And man, I put this on there and you can't hardly even tell it. It, it just, it, it, it works good. I can't say enough about it. I ought to go write him a letter. Well, yeah, the salesman took it, sprayed it back in his mouth. He said, you was a bad breath for 12 hours. They wear right here that it's lower right there than it is back here that's the reason why you trim horses because this should be wearing he hit they hit their heel first and this should be wearing a little better and so that's why you trim them up is because they're not they're not wearing down enough naturally because in, in the wild horses wear their feet down they go anywhere from 15 to 30 miles a day on rockier ground than what we have so the horses, their feet naturally wear. I like the sidewalls of his, they're nice and thick. Yeah, and man, his his back back feet look pretty good. I was... You know, Gabriel's got real thin sidewalls. See how wide, see how big this frog is and how wide it is? That right there is a, that right there is a healthy foot. Although it needs trimmed up, that, that's a healthy, a healthy foot. It's wide here. Uh, the frogs that nice and big. The frog actually pumps blood. There's vessels that run right on top of the frog. That, that frog acts as a cushion and it pumps that blood. That's why the frog's called the heart of the foot. If you if you go and look at a horse, that's something I'd look at. I just kind of look at the feet a little bit. That can all be changed though by proper trimming and, and shoeing. So that, that frog needs to hit the ground and soft dirt definitely has to hit the ground. If you're on rocks all the time, you want your horse up just a little bit higher. But there's horses that run on, on rock, the, the wild Mustangs. That's that's why they're laid out. They're laid out. 
Your frogs are nice and light because it's a natural for the horse's foot. Yeah, that one we got wouldn't have made it in the rock. Her walls are. Gus wouldn't no, either. He'd. We put shoes on Gus every now and then, like if we're going to go out to West Texas or something, I'll put shoes on him. But other than that, we, we run them barefoot. Mine were cracking a little, and I'm putting that paste or glue, whatever it is, all the way around. If you'll take some uh, Jello gelatin, mm -hmm. orange, they say is the best. Did, did you tell me that you used uh, mm -hmm. Somebody I'm was telling me. I used they used gelatin. gelatin for women's fingers. Yeah. It will take probably close to a year, though, for instance, to get all the way down, to get a full year's growth out. I've heard. People told me that in three weeks they noticed a difference in their horse's feet. Uh, not their whole foot, yeah. but they noticed a difference in the horse's foot in three weeks by just using that uh, gelatin a couple days a week. On the hooves or feeding it to them? Feeding it to them. Oh, it. okay. Women take Sweet. gelatin, <clears throat> yeah. drink it, or whatever yeah. for their nails. Uh -huh. Just take some of the regular Jello gelatin uh -huh. and sprinkle like a half package. Take a half package sprinkle in there, and then, and then sprinkle the rest of it in there the next time you feed us. Do that a couple days a week, and you'll notice a difference in their feet. Don't give them great. I I I've never done it. I, I that's just what I've been told, and they and the people that do it, does it swear by it. I do. And and. Every one of them that's told me they use it, they say they eat their horses like the orange the best. Yeah. The reason I say grape, if you have musky dine vines around yeah. in your pasture, they'll go and start eating them. Oh. That's one of the worst things a horse can eat. That's great. That's no, 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 the musky dine. Yeah. That's my musky dine. <laughs> because the, uh, the stem going up in the leaf, they can't digest it. And it builds and impacts it. So you don't feed them grape because then they'll get used to the. They'll go with you. They'll go on. Well, look for somebody's grape in you. Right. <laughs> if you're having problems with their ears, touching their head and stuff, sometimes you have problems there. Uh, it's just the same thing as grooming them. You just come here and wipe on them a little bit, run your hand around there. Sometimes you can't get it, they'll jerk it away, but you. You just keep messing with them, so they get used to you touch them. You won't be able to touch your horse all over the place. You brush your cheeks, huh? Give him a squirt in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Floating the horse's teeth and stuff like that. You gotta take them to a vet to do that. But uh, it's a it's a good thing to have your teeth floated. They'll grow and they'll get spurs on the inside. And you can feel in there. Uh, we had that that other paint horse that we took up to Rogers. Uh, I, I know a guy in Huntsville that floats teeth, and he had him and he opened his mouth, and I got the feel in there, and they're really it's really sharp. And so it. it pokes in their jaw and you can tell if you if you push your jaw right here yeah, I mean he's not jumping around he's not hurting any uh, I haven't had his teeth floated but sometimes younger horses don't have the problem that the older horses do maybe your horses may may be that maybe, way yeah well, I'm hitting 16 seven. but you can feel their jaws here and if they're start jerking their head away and stuff they it, it bothers bothering them A lot of times when I'm doing a horse and somebody's horse is limping or something because they think it's the foot and I, and I, I don't see anything in there and I'll take it off. I'll take it, I'll push down right beside their back bone right here and I'll run my fingers down and I'll watch that horse's reaction. And you'll tell, they'll, they're a little hit. A lot of times they'll throw their ears back like he's doing. Sometimes they'll be out. Could be a little sore right there. But 
Sometimes they'll be out in their back, and you can get that straightened up with horsepower. I, I used to think that was crazy, but they get out. Some of those signs of a hurting horse would be that horse is out by himself. If they're hurt animals. They'll be that if you got them in a place say the biggest this little field here, you may have two of them over there and one of them over here from time to time. But if they're always like that, that horse very well could have an, an issue with it. Uh, could be something out, could be hurting his feet, could be floating, need their teeth floated, uh, could be uh, having uh, problems in their intestines. Uh, but something's not right with that, so that's just one of those signs there, too. So. I really thought I was going to spend more time in the arena with him, but he done a lot better than what I thought he was going to do. Because I ain't working with him. I ain't picked his feet up now. Well, he had a good foundation prior to. He must have done some of that. Right. Well, he don't like to work. And if I go out to catch him, he takes off running. The more we go out there and get him. And we used to have the place set up where we could open the gates. And they'd run up into the front pen. We'd close them up there. Separate them out. And then I'd make him run, run, and run. And then I'd say, whoa, if he'd stop, turn to me, and I'll go up to him. If he takes off, then I'll make him run, 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 run. Or at least keep him moving. He ain't got to actually run, but trot's the best. You know, if you can keep him trotting, and that's good. But he ain't, he ain't worried about anything. Except trying to convince you to let him graze that grass. But you can see that part on his leg right there that swelled up. Right here. And, you know, run my hand down there and feel that. So, it's something that's bothering him a little bit. But. Yeah, they're keeping an eye on that thing. Check or anything like this. Liam stepped over with them logs. But like when your horse leads up with them back feet, if you just yeah. just that right there, keep your feet away from him because they'll kick right here. Now some horses can cow kick. Most horses, okay. most horses can't. That's unnatural for a horse. So it it be it it would they couldn't hardly hit me right here, but. Here they they could so just and I would just wipe down them. I wouldn't pat them like this. It's kind of irritating to them. They may they may sling a leg at you. But if you just pet him down like that, pet on him some, wipe on him with a rag or your hand or whatever. Hands the best because they you want them to feel feel you. But if you if you're uncomfortable with that, you can also take a a glove and a sleeve of a shirt, stuff some stuff in it, wipe it with, with that. Tape it to a broom handle oh, or something. I can rub him all over. So probably what he's doing is he's he's just he's uncomfortable with that for one reason or another. That's a lot of pressure on a horse to pick his foot up when it's not doing it all the time. Like when I, I took I took him to a uh, a kids camp and uh I got him, and uh, he was bucking, and he wasn't turning real good, and so I rode him twice. I took him down the road the third time, and he bucked me off. So I didn't get on him for a couple months, because I was hurt. It, it hurt my ribs real bad. And the kids camp came up in West Texas, and, and they wanted me to come do the foot care clinic for them, so I, I was gonna take him. So I took him, and uh, I had him tied up, and he was probably from here to that trader and sign over there. 
from where I was at and I had him saddled up, tied in some trees over in the shade and I looked over there, there's probably 20 kids around him. Giving it all this and I'm going, oh my God, and I think I'm running over. No, no. <laughs> So when it comes time to do his feet in the clinic, I took him and uh, I got that back foot over there done. That's the only foot I got done. He acted like a fool. And them kids were, they started right there and it was this, uh, what's it called, amphitheater that we were in. And I had this other cowboy pastor, Tad, he, he passed the church up in Canyon, Texas. And he held him and he grabbed his lip and you know, twisted his lip. And uh, anyway, and that's another thing with that lip thing. That's that's a pretty good deal. Kind of. Yeah, I got a twist, but I don't use a twist much. I, you can take their you can take their lip and stuff, and you can you can squeeze on their lip, pinch their lip right here, and just pinch it for a little bit for about two or three seconds, and then let go. And you can see the whole horse's demeanor start to change. Something about that. I don't know what it is. There's something about that. Something about their eyes too. If you can rub your hand over their eyes, uh, it's a, maybe a trust thing. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it works. But that lip thing, they say it, it sends endorphins out that kind of gives them a little bit more calmness about them. Well, I think probably their mother did that when they were little. Well, the first thing you learn to make confidence with any animal. They don't walk up there and start petting on them like yeah, this. Right. You know why? Nobody likes that. You don't like it? Yeah, the horse ain't gonna like, like it either. And one of the biggest problems I saw growing up was city folks coming out to the place. They'd walk up there, horse and they'd just, hey, good. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Don't do that to ours. Yeah. And, uh, Y'all y'all know how to give a horse shot? Not with this, but just say this is a needle. Stand right back here. No. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Right about here where my hand is, right in this area is a good place. Uh, I don't leave my tied up when I give them shots. I take it, I take it loose. I'll have most of them I'll have somebody hold it. And then what I'll do is I'll take and, and I, normally I'll hold it in this hand and I'll I'll poke once, two, three. And every time it's harder. One soft, one harder, one harder, and bam. One, two, three, bam, and it's in. And I just hold it there for just a second. Hit, a lot of times they'll just move just one, one step or two steps, and then I'll go in real slowly with it. But right there is a good spot. You can also give it to them in the rough if you'd like. And I do the same thing. One, two, three, in. And if you're giving penicillin, you want to give at least 10 cc's of penicillin. Uh, any less than that really ain't not going to work on any horse so you, a lot of times it's better to give it two two different places so i'll rotate on sides like when you hone yeah, down the road and you and you see that your your tires are reared up but you're still swaying and your back tires are reared up good just go ahead and pull off somewhere and move your horse in your trailer in this trailer it's a little bit more 